next lecture is on multi tenant isolation so this is like partitioning and network virtualization in cloud data centers so we are going to talk about three technologies actually i mean four here in the list but really VXLAN, NVRGRE, and STT, which can all be grouped under NVO3 as those three technologies, and they are really used in the cloud data centers today. All right, and by doing this discussion, actually, we, by the time we come to the cloud, we would have finished all the networking, as I said before. All right, so so when we go to a cloud and we have multiple tenants. What we want is that each tenant can can get complete control over their part of the network. And what does that mean? That means that they can connect by L2, L3, or whatever they want to do. So they want five VMs, and they want to be connected by whatever method they want to do. It has to be their control, right? Whatever addresses they want to give, MAC addresses, IP addresses, 192, 172, 10 whatever, it's their control. Whatever node locations they want to and move around, it's their control, right? So that is what is called partitioning, basically, is that network virtualization allows the tenants to feel that they, control, they have the complete network under their control. Other tenants in the same data center and the VMs running on the same host can have a totally different address Totally different connectivity and so on and so forth. Right? Second thing is it allows providers to serve a large number of tenants without worrying about client networks. So the the provide so first we saw from the tenant point of view, now we are seeing from the provider point of view. From the provider point of view, they don't have to worry about that this guy is using Ethernet addresses, this guy is using IP addresses, this and that. So that is all, you know, and, and, and there are a large number of customers. So customers is thousands of customers, right? Location of the individual client nodes, number and values of the client partitions, VLANs, subnets, everything, all the details, those are clients' responsibility. And the network could be a single, network could be a single physical interface, a single physical machine, a data center, a metro, a global internet. So that's another thing is that when we are talking about virtualization, I think we have already said this before, is that the network definition could be a single card, and that's a network, or it could be you know, lots of machines, that could be a whole data center, or it could be multiple data centers. Provider could be a system owner, could be an enterprise, a cloud provider, or a carrier. So you know the difference. If I am just a system and I have two VMs, you know, I am a provider. On the other hand, I could be a company like Vashu, or I could be a cloud provider like Google or Amazon, or a carrier like AT&T. Okay? So that is what it is. Now, coming back to this chart which we have presented many times, so today we are going to use this square. We are going to do NVO3, VXLAN, NVGRE, and STT. This is L2 networks using L3. Alex, what is NVO3? <coughs> NVO3 is an IETF group. IETF group on network virtualization overlays using L3 techniques. Network virtualization overlay using L3 techniques. And uh, so this is a common problem. Data center virtual private network in a multi tenant data center. So this is basically the problem we talked about is that you have a cloud and then you want to put many tenants in there. Now it could it doesn't have to be cloud, it could be a simply a company data center in which you have multiple departments which you want to have you know their own control. So multi tenant data centers. And the issues are that we want to have very large number of overlays. A scale in the number of networks, so num hundreds of thousands of DC VPNs, virtual private networks, these what we call overlays, right? So there are two words, underlay, overlay. Overlay is what the tenant gets, that's an apartment. Underlay is the whole building that the provider has, right? That's the high rise. So underlay is the physical network that the provider has and overlay is the virtual network that the tenant gets, right? So, 
and, and we are calling here VPN. In the NVO3 terminology, they call it VPN, virtual private network. So data center virtual private networks, hundreds of thousands of DC VPNs. A scale in the number of nodes, they are talking about millions of VMs or hundreds of thousands of physical servers. Okay. And VM or PM migration, they should be able to move things around. So this is actually the issues that NVO3 is solving. By the way, NVO3 is not done, NV3 is working right now. And all the protocols that we are going to talk about today, they are not standard yet. They are being used, but they are still being developed. So th their goal is to have allow migration to support both L2 and L3 VPNs. Some people will want to have L3 connectivity, some people will want to have L2 connectivity and both are allowed. Dynamic provisioning, any time you can provision it. Addressing independence, you could use any kind of addressing you want. Again, the, uh, right now the choices are <coughs> L2, L3. And then virtual private means other tenants do not see your, your frames. So virtual private means that if you are living in one apartment, you cannot you know, peek into somebody else's apartment. That means that you cannot see the packets which belong to some other customer, to your competitors. Right? And then optimal forwarding. Optimal forwarding means somehow, you know, the packets are not just ping-ponging. Now, we, I, I, I don't know whether we discussed VRRP. We discussed it, you know, in, indirectly some time ago. This is the virtual routing protocol. Um, and um, this was related to the tromboning. That, you know, the, with, with tromboning, the, the routing is not efficient. You know, you go to the wrong place with other, other data centers and so on and so forth. But anyway. So these are the things that NVO3 is doing. So the goal is to develop a general architectural framework, identify the key functional blocks, identify alternatives for each functional block. So basically, this is a general problem and there are many solutions. So they said what we will do is they will divide the problem into modules and for each module people can select different solutions. Deployment can mix and match these alternatives, analyze which requirements are satisfied by different al alternatives and make sure that we can do the management, which means to develop OAM if necessary. All right, so they have developed a terminology, tenant system. So whenever they say tenant system, that is a VM or a PM. A virtual network is L2 or L3 tenant network. NVE, Network Virtualization Edges, those are the entities that connect tenant systems. So for example, this is an NVE and this is a tenant system, this is a tenant system. So now, if the tenant owns the physical machine, this could be a physical machine. If the tenant owns a virtual machine, then this could be a virtual machine. And um, whatever connects these two is a NVE. So they are just generalizing the names instead of using the switch calling it a switch, they are calling it NVE and the reason they have to call it NVE because switch means layer 2, router means layer 3 and here we are developing it for both, right? So NVE is the entity that connects. Then NVA, Network Virtualization Authority and, um, and so NVA is the actually the manages these NVEs. Basically, each tenant has its own NVE and it has its own NVA that somehow manages how to route from one NVE to the next NVE. And then they have NV domain. So this is a domain. So this is what we call an overlay. Okay. This is the set of NVEs under one authority. And then there is a reason. which is multiple domains. All right. So let's go one more time. This is a virtual network VN. This dotted thing is virtual network. It consists of many TS tenant systems which are connected by NVEs. And when you take many VNs that becomes a domain and when you take many domains that becomes a region. 
So, underlay network, we already defined that. Underlay network is the provides the overlay network service, which is basically the physical network. Orchestration systems. So, we have already used the word orchestration before. Orchestration systems are the one that create new VMs and new switches, new network entities. So, those are the, this could be a program or a web page where you go and put something in and you say, I want 100 VMs connected like this. So, that is your orchestration system. NVEs could be in V switches, external P switches or span both. So NVE is the thing that connects VMs and that could be a virtual switch or it could be a physical switch. You know, or both just like in, in VEPA. You use the internal as well as the external. Alright, NVA could be distributed or centralized or replicated. So this is the thing that controls all these NVEs. So that could be a distributed thing just like OSPF or it could be centralized like in SDN where you have a central controller which has all the routes and tells all the to all the people or it could be and, and could be replicated means if it is centralized clearly you have to replicate it so that you know it doesn't become a single point of failure. All right, NVEs get information from hypervisors and our NVA. So, let's just see this picture and that maybe it become clear. NVEs, this NVE gets the information about who is connected to it, how it can find out, it can either use a protocol or it can just ask the hypervisor there that, okay, you have to read five, this and which is mine, you know. So, hypervisor can just tell it right there. Or it could ask the NVA which is outside right here, outside controller. That is what it says. NVEs get information from hypervisors and our NVA. Hypervisor to NVE protocol, they need some protocol for that. And they need NVE to NVA protocol. And so they need, so this is called data plane learning and this is called control plane learning. Alright. So there, now here it is, here is the thing actually. What they are doing is they are trying to generalize both L2 and L3 and that's why they have to invent all these new names. And so this, is data plane learning is like source learning and this control plane learning is like in exchanging messages. Then map and incap. That is map and incap is encapsulate. Find destination and VE which is mapping and send is encapsulate in the send. So suppose you want to send talk to some other NVE, you to find out what is their address is and then send it to them. Alright, that is called map and incap. So these are all the special terms that NVO3 has defined. They have a, they had a different meaning before when we just said L2. So the problem is NVO3 has actually trying to cover both the links here. Actually, I should clarify that. that in this, we have two rows. We have L2 using L3. This is where I put NVO3. But this also covers L3 using L3 right here. They are providing both kind of both kind of virtualization, L3 virtualization as well as L2 virtualization. So right now, these technologies already exist. Even before NVO came in, the group came in, we already know BGP and MPLS virtual private networks are used. BGP and MPLS Ethernet virtual private networks are used. VLANs are there, PBB is there, PB is there, so on and so forth. Sartre path bridging is there. Um, VLAN station identifier discovery and configuration protocol. So this was actually QBG. When we were discussing QBG, we had three or four protocols. VDP was one of them. If you remember, that was the one that was kind of replicating TCP. So that is the one. And then there is um, address resolution for massive numbers of hosts in data centers. We have not talked about this ARMD. And if we get time, someday we'll talk about it, but not today. But so there is another protocol, then TRIL, we have talked about, L2 VPN, um, we haven't talked about it, but there are so many L2 uh, VPN technologies. And then proxy mobile IP, again mobile IP, we do talk about that in 473. And then there is a proxy mobile IP where, you know, you don't, you, you proxy does it for you. And list we have talked about. So anyway, let's see. BGP MPLS, this is widely deployed. MPLS is widely deployed. So we talked about the MPLS part of it. We did not talk about the BGP part of it. Okay. And 
this is in this table here sorry in the previous table that my table here so we have bgp mpls in this list here but anyway so there are lots of um, this um, layer 3 technologies that we have not talked about and bgp in particular actually um, since many of you may not have the background and i didn't want to cover it here but anyway so let's see let's this is just for historical purposes these are all old technologies they exist right now and they are used right now so bgp is quite bgp and mpls is used quite quite a bit bgp mpls cannot be used in data centers because the host do not implement bgp yeah so the bgp is the border gateway protocol which is the wide area network routing protocol <coughs> just like ospf is for low, you know for small areas for large areas you use bgp bgp is used between the between the enterprises or between the companies ospf is used inside the company so since you guys don't know I, i didn't want to go too much into here but basically since it is used only between the companies the host inside the companies don't know about bgp they know about ospf right but they don't know much about bgp and therefore it is not used it, it is difficult to use it in the data centers bgp mpls is deployed in the carrier networks but again same reason bgp is not there in the data centers 802.1q pb pbb these vlans are used of course shortest path bridging is being used and this uh, is coming in qbg is coming in so and so on so forth so anyway so these technologies are there but they want to develop they want to see what are the so one of the things they are doing is and your three group is doing is analyzing these and seeing what are the things that they don't do that they that need to be done 